Hello, it's Ellie. You found the Hidden Grove, and this is top 10 indie decks of VR to Meg at Rose Honey Ritual and Thea at Garden Goddess Tarot. So I have my 10 here. I just wanted to put it out there that these are just the 10 I chose today, okay? That doesn't mean I'm gonna love them as much as I do now forever doesn't mean they're my 10 of all time. I think I would go crazy trying to decide <laughs> those 10 um, just because I'm an overthinker, but let's, let's talk about what I have here. All right, so the first one I'm going to pull up is the Serpent Fire Tarot. I really love this deck. I love the edging. It's like a coppery gold almost. I like the backs a lot. This kind of replaced all um, like cosmic type decks for me. Like it replaced the moon child for me. I ended up, after I got this deck, I ended up just getting rid of that one. I mean, rehoming it. Um, this one is just, it feels good. I like the depictions. I like their description in the guidebook makes a lot of sense to me. These images are just visually very stimulating to me. And I mean, in comparison with the moon child, they make a lot more sense for the card meanings. Um, I think something that makes... <laughs> A top deck for me is if it can just like replace a whole group of other decks like there are many decks that I've seen on the internet similar to this that I just like oh well I have the serpent fire and I love this one so much that you know that's all I need and that makes a top deck for me oh this entrance breath this is awesome yeah this is great So that is Serpent Fire Tarot. Next up is my favorite collage deck, the Aquamarie. This one, the collage, it's still in order since the last time I showed you in video. Um, this is just, it's my favorite collage deck only because it feels so personal and like the images here are meaningful, um, meaningful to the creator at least. Her little blurb talks about how, talks about her story. It comes with an extra card that I don't have right now, but about her story creating this deck and what, what led her to find these images and where they're from in her life. Alexa Marie Harrington. I really love it. It is, the least overwhelming collage deck I have too. Oh, well, maybe not quite, but it isn't overwhelming like many collage decks are for me. For example, like the Teles Matero, I get really overstimulated by just like how much is in the image. And here there's a lot there, but it doesn't feel overwhelming to me. I really love it. I'm, I'm considering getting the, uh, I'm forgetting what oh the jumble dance tarot just because I've been loving collage decks so much and unlike with the serpent fire kind of the replacing other decks thing I never find that one collage deck just like overpowers another for me or can replete completely replace another because they all seem so personal to the creator and their vision and I just love this art style I think collage is having a real come back in the tarot world. All right, that's the aquamarine. Backs are really cool too. All right. Next up is an oracle deck. One second. The Supra Oracle. This is just 
such a multifaceted oracle for me. It's one of my favorites because I feel like I can use it with anything. Um, the cards in here, the keywords are really unique and really relatable, like everydayness. Yeah, sometimes I do feel like my readings are just very mundane and I need to not try to make too much out of them. <laughs> I have a tendency to do that, try to make my readings have these big significant message when sometimes they're just like, oh, well, today you experienced this or you're going to see your mom today. <laughs> Things like that. Yeah, and the black and white, or I guess it's kind of like sepia in this, it, it matches so many tarot decks for me. It's just kind of an easy pick when I'm looking for some extra something in a reading because aesthetically it's good to look at. And then these keywords are just really good. Gentleness, sageness, reawaken. There's elemental symbols. And then a they have these like shape cards. Originally I took them all out of the deck because I didn't know how to use them. But then recently I've been adding them back in because I look at kind of the background has images to kind of pull from. And I've been getting a lot, even from the color of the shape and, you know, the, the structure of the shape. And then what does this mean? Like looking out onto the horizon to these areas of land, maybe you're on a journey. I don't know. It's something... I can still get things from this cards where at first I, I felt like I couldn't, but I'm happy to add them back now. There's a nothing card. That's great. Like this one, I like this icy crystal structure and then the snow capped mountains in the background. Yeah, I like that. All right, so that's the Supra Oracle by Usi. I really want to get the Pagan Other Worlds. I, I don't know what has been keeping me from it for so long. It just, I love this deck so much that it makes me feel like maybe I would like that one too. And I have been loving Pip decks a lot more recently, which brings me to my next one I keep in this bag. This is the Ritual Tarot, which I consider to be a pip deck, um, Tierra May. This is the first edition without the, it, it ha, it's, doesn't have the gilded borders, but it's the one that didn't come with a box and doesn't have the new lust card in it. Um, I love it so much. I have an art history background. I got my bachelor's degree in art history before I went on to my master's in archaeology. So sort of that ancient art, these like, there's a lot of stone tools in here, like tools that looks like they were used for hunting practices and things like that, that just feel really relevant when I look at them. I, I love the imagery. I find myself recognizing a lot of these images and a lot of these tools and bowls and ceramic and I love the collage style, the way it's put together. It seems like when she was making it, she was putting a lot of emotion into it. Like she was emotional when she was making it, kind of like I imagine her making these aggressive cuts and pasting down really haphazardly and just kind of like putting all of her energy into this deck, which I really love. Like you can kind of tell that they're not wasn't trying to be this perfect cut and paste type collage. And then Judith with Holofernes. Oh, so good. That's the Justice card. Yeah. I really like this. And I... Pip deck might not be accurate. It's, it's cards like this that make me say it's a pip deck. It's not extremely... Yeah, like this. I guess it is. Um, I mean, there are some that are more... I mean, the Mater's not, clearly. But there are some that have more than others. So that's what makes me hesitant to completely call it a Pip deck. But this deck has just been really, really amazing to get to know and work with. I 
I like it. And I know that it's, it's maybe divisive um, on the internet right now, mostly because of its cost. I was lucky enough to get it. She was having a holiday sale, so this copy was $20 off. But still, even $20 off, this is one of my one of my most expensive decks, even with that big big price decrease and I think something that like bothers people and kind of bothers me a lot is that there is no real explanation of what the cost is for in the deck like um an example I have I have the abyssal tarot and that one is probably it's it's 70 something dollars it's very expensive it's around the same price range as I got this one and the artist of the abyssal tarot explains you know this is my photography work and the reason it costs what it is is because you know i'm charging one dollar per photo um and she explains you know this is how i came up with this cost and also the cost of production plays into that but for the buyer it makes sense to pay one dollar per photo so it's 70 something dollars it's not fully 70 i think it's like 72 or 75 so it's less than a dollar per photo but um not the full 78 but with this one, there's really no explanation of why the cost is the way it is. Like, I know it's made with all eco-materials, eco-friendly materials, but I have other decks that are also made with eco-friendly materials that are nowhere near the cost of this, so I'm not sure. And then the book that it came with, it wasn't even bound or anything. It's just, like, piece of, it's just stapled on the edges. And then I'm thinking for people who paid full cost, that's, what, $95 for a stapled guidebook? Yeah, I mean, I do love this deck, but I understand that frustration for sure. Um, all right, what's next? Uh, yes, my favorite Marseille deck, which happens to be an indie deck as well. I keep it in its original wrapping, which makes it kind of um, inconvenient to take out and put back in, but this is just so cool. It's a historical reproduction of Claude Burdell's tarot from 1751 and it comes in a reproduction of the original wrapping that the Marseille decks used to come in and that's just so cool so I keep it in the wrapping which makes it kind of hard to <laughs> use all the time I think sometimes it might make it a little inconvenient I should maybe I should keep this wrapper separate um, but this is my favorite Marseille deck I think it's because it has all the primary colors, but they're not as like intensely stark. And I really like the reproduction quality, the messiness of the lines. And still, even though it is that kind of messiness, the line work is so good. And I know, who did I see talking about this? Um, Jonaki, uh, Catamancy Tarot. She also comments on how just beautiful this line work is. and how of the Marseille decks, this probably has the finest line work. And I definitely agree with her on that. I think this is just a beautiful, beautiful deck. And I really love the Marseille system. It's just, you know, it's very straightforward and gives, gives clear readings. So I'm sorry if you hear background noise. I live in a, a studio apartment, so it's um, there's a lot of things going on. <laughs> yeah. Just amazing. I love it so much. Maybe I've been saying that. I mean, these are my top favorites, so I guess I, I am allowed to say how much I love them in this video, even if it is a bit repetitive. Um... Okay, next up, another Oracle deck, Old Ways Magic Oracle by Naomi Cornock. This is just, the only, okay, the only thing I don't like about this deck is the way it smells. It smells like chlorine. Let me just, yeah, it smells like chlorine, and I can't quite explain why. Um, it just, yeah, the... I mean, I guess it's just the production makes it smell that way, but I I do not like that smell. I'm allergic to chlorine, so every time I get in a pool that's chlorinated, I have to, like, 
shower really quick after I get out because if it dries on my skin anyway okay this is a lot of information but I get hives like really bad hives from chlorine so I don't love the smell um but I do love this deck <laughs> yes the artwork is just so beautiful and I like these big picture concepts that it gives tribe wisdom farsight like these feel like big messages that aren't meant for like day-to-day -day mundane readings like almost to incorporate into bigger spreads in like a overarching message type of way there are some gods and goddesses in here some deities that are have been really great to learn about um but oh wow yeah i think each card has the key word and then a deity represented which it talks about in the guidebook either a deity or a or a, an animal and so each card kind of has that connection and there aren't that many cards but what is here is so powerful that it doesn't need more oh wow and this art is just gorgeous and i think this art is the type of thing that needs to be in an oracle deck like i don't know how well I would receive this type of artwork if it was like in a tarot, but that's just me. I mean, it's gorgeous. Maybe I would, if I saw it, I would think differently, but I just think it's perfect the way it is. So there we go, Old Ways Magic. I think this is, this is available on her website, gnomeart.com. Okay, next another oracle deck that has that similar big overarching energies for me is the devas divas devas of creation oracle by Silla Conway. i edged mine in this like deep navy color kind of match the backs and i love this deck wow it is just good <laughs> i think for these kind of decks it's the type of thing where, again, the cards aren't mundane for me. I can't really pull them in like a daily reading or for a everyday message. Like I'll pull it once in a while to get the energy from the card. There are planetary energies. There are, there are elemental energies in here. There's spiritual energies. It's just so good. All of the, you know, spiritual deities of the earth that surrounds us and influences our lives in big and small ways are represented here. And it's great, the mountains. Wow, yeah. I need to use the guidebook with this because I still haven't gotten familiar enough with each image to be able to recognize what everything is yet, but even without the guidebook, just these painting, painted images are so evocative that you can kind of sense the energy before you read about it. I hope there isn't glare on these cards. <laughs> I haven't really been checking, sorry about that. Yes, yeah, so that's the Devas of Creation by So Conway, I'm keeping this bag with the Ouroboros on there. Okay, the next deck um, kind of surprised me. I wasn't expecting to have this in my top 10, but I, I guess it's here. This is the Corrupted Tarot. Um, I backed it on Kickstarter. Oh my God, yes. Wow. I guess I put it back in order at some point, which I, this is my only um, collaborative art deck, so I, oh, actually that's a lie. I have the Ostara Tarot, um, that one's another collaborative, but this is the most weirdly cohesive collaborative tarot deck I have, and the premise of the deck is that it's supposed to present to you the reversal meanings of each card. And I just love it. I love the darkness and the, you know, the spiritual creepiness going on. I think it's great. 
Let me just give it a shuffle. First of all, I love shuffling this cardstock. It's like a matte type, just so that you guys can see kind of a variety of cards in here while I'm flipping through. Four of Swords. Look at that. I mean, there's so much here. What is even going on? You see that guy kind of resting down there, trying to get his sleep, but all of these outside influences, these spirits are keeping him from getting the rest he needs. Great reversal message. Yeah, I... These are great cards. I feel like this deck isn't quite, it doesn't fit in this with the rest of my collection. Like it's very unique, which is why I chose it as one of my favorites because I don't have anything like this. And it's just, I love using it and it's so, cool like I'm just satisfied by it I guess There's something about it that I love that sh 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 you know that type of cardstock that makes that sound <laughs> good deck I'm not sure if this is still available or not but I'll check for you guys I'll add that into the description. <laughs> it also has one of these cool like top, top close boxes. All right, two more. Here's another Oracle deck. The Poesis, Poesis? Poesis Oracle. I really like this deck. This deck um, is my preference over the reclaim oracle i feel like they're very similar in their messages like there's heal create freedom they have these feeling messages like that tap into emotional events or blockage like that but i i like the coloring in this deck more i like the images breathe i feel like with the Reclaim Oracle, there are some messages that I almost have to force myself to see. Like, it, it, like almost like it's trying to make me think there's something wrong when there isn't anything wrong. Like, you'll get messages like hatred. Like, there's a hatred card or, like, a jealousy card. And I have to think, oh, my God, like where am I? Where do I have hatred? And I almost feel like it evokes some of those negative emotions for me when I don't have them. Like, when I, they're not relevant. And I don't want... I don't want to, I don't want that. I don't want to kind of make myself think I'm, I have negativity in my life when maybe there isn't once I, when I pull a card and th this deck doesn't do that for me. The, the messages, I mean, there are some challenging ideas in here, but they tap into that emotional center in a way for me that's much more relevant. Um, and I like that a lot. Expand. Wound. See, then there's the wound. Like, you get to decide for yourself what that wound is. It isn't a specific feeling or situation that is presented to you. It's you kind of exploring what, what does wound mean to you. Yeah, test, listen. This is a great deck. And um, I wish the online guidebook, I had a copy of it, because for me, it kind of takes me out of it. The, the guidebook associated with this deck, each deck has a poem associated with it. And the poems are very beautiful. And I just wish I had them printed. Maybe I can do that myself and make my own little guidebook. But 
to have to go to the internet and look it up kind of takes me out of it sometimes. So I just kind of use it on its own without the poems, but love this deck. All right, and then the last deck I have to show you is the Tabula Mundi Tarot. This, yes, I just recently got, I wonder, yeah, I just recently got these expansion deck and cards to go with my deck. I haven't really looked through those yet, but I love this deck. Um, it's just colorful and esoteric and there's just like an abundance of imagery in here that I don't use it in bigger spreads, but like three cards, yeah. Um, it's good. I and it's groovy too. Like it has this <laughs> groovy energy that I just really enjoy. I've been frustrated recently with decks that like don't give me more than just like I'm saying like a lot. That's really annoying. I'm sorry. Um, I've been frustrated with decks recently that don't give me more than just the basic RWS imagery in them. Like I have some clone decks that are RWS clones. Well, this is a Thoth. This is a Thoth based deck, but I'm just saying in, in general that just kind of reproduce the exact same images of maybe different color or I mean the characters are doing something slightly different but it's just basically an RDS and it, it frustrates me I'm like why do I need this I don't but why did I why did I get this when it, really all I need is the RWS when it's just the same thing well I don't feel that way with this deck in terms of the Thoth I don't feel like this exactly reproduces the Thoth like essence right it has its own thing going and yeah, the imagery, I think there's more elements to the images here than in the Thoth deck that are interesting to, it has the Thoth basis, but then kind of the background and external elements that you can add to your readings. So this is great for me, the peak card. <laughs> yeah. So that is my last indie deck I have to show you. I definitely have a lot of honorable mentions just because it was so hard for me to, I don't know, like I said, this is, in the moment, this is my go-tos right now, but there have been other times where a different deck is just like my all-time favorite or maybe a deck that's newer to me. I didn't add decks that are super new to me because even something that I know is gonna be one of my all-time favorites. Like I just got Tarot as color the Ethel Cole Hoon deck. And I know that will probably one day be one of my tops, but I am hesitant to add it because, you know, it's new to me. So it's not really a top deck yet. Um, so maybe I'll do another video like Thea did with my honorable mentions, but that's all I have for you now. Alrighty, bye bye